Welcome back to the mountain bike build series. In this video, I'm gonna take this Paragon Machine Works head tube that I bought that's made out of steel, and I'm gonna change the outside profile of it a little bit on my manual lathe. Let's get into it. So we've been ordering materials and designing and yada yada. It's time to get into the shop, right? So this is something that I ordered and I explained why I bought this. This is a Paragon Machine Works 44 millimeter head tube. It's 130 millimeters long nominally. And so, uh, I, you know, what I would like to have done is to have bought a chunk of 4130 steel, chromoly steel, that had a mill scale finish and that the outside diameter was larger uh, than I needed and the inside diameter was smaller than I needed and that I could put it on a lathe like this and I could machine the outside to exactly the spec that I wanted, I could machine the inside to exactly the spec I wanted, I could cut it exactly where I wanted and then it would all be controlled by me and I'm a little bit of a control freak at least about certain things. I like to, I like to get it the way that I want it. Well, uh, there's some issues with that. When you go to bore the inside of tubing uh, that has a relatively deep uh, reach, you know, you'd be using a boring bar, so you need a relatively long reach to get in there, and uh, the tubing itself is sort of flexible and springy, and it's actually quite difficult to get a good surface finish and hold a decent tolerance on your size. And so, if you're just making a one off and you have like a manual lathe like this, uh, you know, in order to make a piece like this, certainly you could do it. You know, old school machinists are capable of this and way more, uh, but you would spend most of your time on the inside and only a little bit of your time on the outside. So I decided I'd just buy the tube, it's like 12 bucks, and now I'm gonna put it on my lathe and I'm gonna do that which I wanted to do in the first place, but just a lesser version of it and only to the outside. And so in order to do that, you have to figure out a way to hold it on the lathe so that you can do your cuts. So on the lathe, you know, we have our motor and our headstock, and this here is a three jaw chuck, and there's all different ways to hold your workpiece, but you know, right now we're set up with a three jaw chuck to hold our workpiece. And then over here, we have a tail stock, and this is a number three Morse taper, and I can feed it in and I can lock it down and all that stuff that a lathe has. And these are ways to hold and support the workpiece, which is spinning. And then here we have our tool post and this holds various cutters, right? So this one here is a little chamfer, chamfer bit and there's, there's different cutters and stuff. So I need to figure out how the heck I'm gonna hold and support this on here where I can access all of the outside of it in one setup. That's how I wanna do it. I don't wanna hold it by the three jaw chuck. That presents issues. First of all, if I hold it by the three jaw chuck, I'm, I'm pinching it by three points and uh, that has a tendency on tubing to deform it. And then when you release the spring pressure or you know, you, when you release the pressure, it's now it's kind of like a, uh, it's got lobes to it or something. I don't want that. Uh, additionally, the three jaw chuck would, would grab on some of the work surface. I could grab it by the inside if I had small enough jaws, which I don't. But again, you could create the three lobes thing. I could make aluminum soft jaws and that's a huge production. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is a pretty simple setup I'm gonna use these chunks of scrap aluminum that I have. And I'm, this is the first one that I'm gonna make. This is more complicated. And this goes on the tailstock side so that I can use a dead center in here to support. On this end, there'll be sort of like this. There'll be a center here. And then I'm gonna machine it. And this will hold the one end of the head tube. And then similarly, in the three jaw chuck, this is a lot easier to make. This will hold the other end of the head tube. So let's start making it and you'll see what I mean. So I decided not to show every step of making these. If you're interested in watching somebody make beautiful chips on a manual lathe, just go watch A-Bomb79. Uh, he's, he's very good at that and he's very good at making videos all the time about it. Uh, but anyway, it's pretty simple lathe work. So, so here what we have is this stud piece that's, that, that's mounted in the three jaw chuck and that's gonna stay there right now. Now I machined this while it was clamped in there. So this is very incredibly concentric to the, the spindle itself and the rotation of the spindle. If I take it out of the chuck and put it back in, it's not guaranteed to be as concentric. Though I think for the task at hand, we don't need it to be, you know, like within a thousandth of an inch or anything super tight. Within a couple thousandths is probably fine. And uh, this piece here, there is gonna be a little bit more run out from one end to the other. I don't think that matters. So the idea is you have these little spud things that, that fit tight on the end of the tube and they support it, right? And so now uh, this hole here, it's supposed to have a heavier 60 degree center, but the, the hole that I was starting with was kind of already big, but it, it should be fine for the task at hand. So I'm gonna bring in my tailstock, which has a dead center, and then I'm gonna clamp it and then uh, I'll bring it in some, but what I'm actually gonna do, 
A live center is the same thing, but it has bearings so that it spins freely. And a lot of times you get away with a dead center, which is a lot simpler. Uh, I think they're maybe designed more for, for a, a different sort of application, but this is what I have. You just put a little bit of grease on there. And uh, for the amount of time that it's gonna be mounted and ah, spinning, it's, it'll be fine. It'll chew up this piece a little bit. I'm not really worried about that. So it should be obvious here now. Now, what, what I've done is I've created a way to support the tube so that I can access the outside diameter of it uh, with a turning tool here. So I could reduce the diameter or I could just change the profile selectively. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, the way that these are produced, I think is different than, than this, but this is a good way to access the outside of it. So it spins pretty, pretty freely but it's, uh, it's held tightly. I don't think it's gonna chatter or anything. So I haven't committed to a hard plan. Maybe that'd be a better idea, but uh, what I'm trying to do here is mostly cosmetic. I know that this is fairly heavy duty, and so I'm not gonna remove much material. I think the main thing that I really wanna do is just lightly skim the diameter of the center section, and I wanna bring the cutter in so that I'm kinda getting rid of this large radius, and I'll replace it with that, uh, that sort of 60 degree included angle of the cutter. That will be what leads up to these larger diameters on the end. Um, that's what I think I'm gonna go for, so very slight, diameter reduction here. We'll see how that goes. I'll work into it and uh, let's let it rip. I'm going to start on this diameter. There I didn't have enough pressure to hold it. So we're having a live center with bearings would maybe help you could push really hard but I also just take lighter cuts so there I've pretty much gotten rid of that radius I'm gonna go down to the other end and rough out the radius over here So what I'm learning here is that because of the, the way that it's held, I can't take a very heavy cut. I need to do really light cuts or it spins on there. So if I had a live center, I'd be able to preload a lot harder and then it would grip better on here. But this is fine for what I'm doing. Just take lots of passes with light cuts. Now that I've roughed those out, you can see that it's not 100% concentric. You know, it's cutting on this part of the diameter, but not here. You know, that's okay. It's uh, it's probably not a lot of difference. And there's uh, there should be plenty of wall thickness in here. That's my estimation. So. Uh, now that I have those roughed out, I'm going to put the, the power feed on for the Z-axis and I'm going to, uh, you know, make a cut or two until I get this kind of cleaned up. And then if I have to use like a Scotch-Brite or a hand file or something to polish it to get a nicer surface finish, I'll do that, at which point the head tube will be pretty much done. So you can see, you know, part of it here is real shiny. That's the Paragon Machine Works finish. And then this here is with my uh, not as ideal of a setup and not as ideal of a cutter and no coolant. And so uh, anyway, that tells you that it's not totally concentric, right? It's cutting on part of the rotation and not on the rest of it. Uh, I don't think that's that big of a deal. You wouldn't want to be totally uh, out of round, but this is this is not too bad. It's a couple thousandths, uh, probably less than five. So I'm gonna um, dial it in a little bit more and just try and clean it up and get a consistent finish. Uh, all the way around and uh, so I'll just make another pass. I reverse the feed direction here and I'm just taking my time and join myself. So 
So that's what I would call a full cleanup. You can see that the area where I was cutting is now fully machined and there's no areas, uh, you know, there's there's not one side that got machined and one side that's still the, the Paragon finish. This is all uh, fresh cut material here except on the ends. And so it's just not as shiny and that's totally acceptable. I'm gonna paint it. But while I have it on here and I have good access to it, I'm gonna carefully uh, try and polish that up a little bit. And so you'll notice, you know, safety, these are safety glasses. I don't have the side shields on, I probably should. Um, I, you know, when I get a hoodie, I cut off the strings because th this machine, if something gets pulled in there, it's just gonna pull you in there. They got mountains of torque and they'll, they're a dangerous machine. So, so I'm being mindful of, uh, of that sort of stuff, you know, no loose stuff that can really easily get caught in there. And now this is a, a little bit more of a dangerous operation. I'm gonna take a hand file and I'm gonna uh, put some strokes on this and try and polish it up a little bit and then I'm gonna finish with Scotch-Brite. And so the jaws here individually, uh, more than anything else, really have the capacity to snag on stuff. And so you need to be very mindful of these and uh, you know operate as safely and as mindfully as you can. So basically, uh, do this sort of thing at your own risk. I'm not advocating this as a safe practice. I think it's possible to do it and survive, uh, but I'm not guaranteeing anything more than that. So uh, here we go. Trying to trying to uh, support the file in a way uh, where, where I'm not pushing toward. I don't know. It's dangerous no matter how you do it, but. I take a couple strokes with the file and then I kind of uh, get rid of what's loaded up in there because it loads up and it packs up. And what this is doing is it's just kind of removing some of the high spots of the, the inconsistencies in the finish where rather than maybe making a really nice razor sharp cut, maybe it was kind of tearing the steel a little bit because my cutter's not perfect. I'm just kind of trying to polish it out into a nice flatter surface and make it look a little bit smoother and then I'll polish it with Scotch-Brite. So now I'm going to use some Scotch-Brite and I'm going to polish it up, so turn the speed up a little bit. So you can just see the difference there in the surface finish. It just looks nicer on the one side. So uh, at this point I'm going to say it's done, back off the brake, pull the, ooh that's warm. So there's friction there, even with the grease there's friction, this piece is kind of hot. And this is the result now, and uh, you know it's not perfect, but it looks pretty decent. I like, you know, ba basically this is my vanity getting the best of me. I want it to look a little bit different than what other people have and I, you know, I wouldn't complain about the result of this, but the process is not something that I'm totally sold on. So I haven't done this process this exact way before, but I've done similar kinds of things. And uh, really in order to get a good surface finish with the cutter that I had, I had to polish it with hand tools. And whenever you get your hands in on a manual machine like this, it's just really, uh, you know, you're, you're putting your life in, uh, and uh, you're putting your life in your hands or whatever the expression is. Anyway, it's just dangerous work and um, you probably get away with it a lot of times, uh, you know, if you're lucky, if you know what you're doing, if you don't get distracted or something, but um, it's just bad practice. And so um, I, to me, it's not really worth it to do it this sort of way again. So I would brainstorm if I was gonna do it again about how to get the better surface finish off the machine or, or whatever, you know, that's a decision for you. Uh, but I'm not saying any of this is safe or that you will survive it even one time because you maybe won't. Uh, these machines kill people and uh, they're serious machines. So, so anyway, I got sort of the cosmetic result. You know, this is my vanity getting the better of me. I think it looks nice. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. And so now this is ready for the next steps that it's gonna take to get it ready to put into the bike that I will weld and I will build and I will ride. Well, thanks for watching the video. Uh, the next build series video is coming in hot. So you're gonna hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.